When we're thinking about bush rangers in New South Wales, two men will obviously come to mind. That would be Ben Hall and Frank Gardner. But there were many other men that would take to the roads in that time. This is a list of just some of them, but on that list is a man that seems to have faded into historical obscurity. He was either indirectly or indirectly involved in the number of murders that were committed by bush rangers. In 1865, they will bring John Gilbert to justice. John Gilbert arrived here in the colony in October of 1852 aboard the Revenue, forces a manager to sign a cheque and threatens him if it doesn't get cash, he's going to come back and shoot him. So the map that was on screen is just a representation of some of the crimes that Gilbert and O'Malley will get up to when they first reappear. And you start to wonder, is there somebody or something at Juni that's safe haven when things are pretty tight up north? Gilbert makes it down here a couple of times. Why would he do that? Well, there's a report that Gilbert actually turned up here dressed as a woman. So maybe he came down here and hid. Gilbert orders Parry to stand, and Parry says, I'd rather die first. Gilbert must think to himself, suit yourself, and shoots Parry through the chest. So Gilbert takes upon himself to go inside the hall, at the, uh, the store, grab all the dresses, takes them, plants them under a tree out of harm's way. Now, in April of 1865, it's probably the last time the gang will be seen together. They're at Crowper Station, not very far from Forbes. The police will surround the hut, and there'll be an ambush where John Gilbert will be shot and killed by the police from Bonnell. There was never a stone at the sleeper's head. There's never a fence beside, and the wandering stock on the grave may tread. Unnoticed and undenied, but the smallest child on the watershed can tell you how Gilbert died. <laughs>